Good news and bad news this morning. Woke up to find my engine lift chains are undeliverable. So good good news is that uh, O'Reilly says they have them in stock. So I think we're going to pick up a couple of those. I got some E85 uh, sensor and harness here that I was going to put on the cutlass, but I'm not so sure at this point. I found an old box of uh, uh, indexing washers for the plugs. It's got a few of them missing out of the bag. But uh, I don't know, we may index the plugs just for grins. And here are the plugs that were in the truck that I removed. They're heat range sevens. These are the ones that Whipple recommends, I believe. And I originally run these, these are heat range six. I ran these when they're naturally aspirated and when I first installed the Whipple. This truck did pretty good with the LT1 cam when it was naturally aspirated. Anyway, I guess we're off to uh, O'Reilly's to hunt down a couple engine chains. Alright, there's one. They only had one in stock here, so I have to go to another O'Reilly's to get the other one. I just feel better using two because that, uh, that uh, high pressure fuel pump and all that uh, plumbing underneath that manifold might get knocked around with one chain. The guy in there was telling me that uh, I said, yeah, we were having trouble finding it. It was on the shelf. And he said, uh, I said, yeah, I know I've been in here before. They were behind glass under a locked case. I know I've seen them here before. It's a long time ago. He said, oh, we haven't had cases in a uh, locked cases in a long time ago because it made people feel bad. I said, what? He's like, oh, yeah. They said it was really unprofessional to have your stuff locked up. I thought, wow, that's really a sign of the times. Anyway, let me go to the other O'Reilly's and pick up another another chain. Came home. I'm thinking one might just do it. Clears pretty easy. I'm gonna get some uh, some longer and higher, higher grade bolts. Put this thing on. Sure. Hmm, I think that'll probably do it. I may have to take some slack out of the chain because that engine, engine hoist doesn't go super high. Yeah, it'll be fine. Let's get some. These are metric bolts, so I don't know if it's what the grade 8 equivalent of. Standard is metric 10 or something. Anyway, we'll go to we'll go to Home Depot and get us a couple more bolts. All right, guys. One thing led to another. We're just about we just about got it in, or we're swinging it in anyway. Even down this sloped driveway, swinging it in there. So give me a few seconds, we'll get it in. All right, we're getting her. We're getting her put in over here. Looks like we're gonna make it pretty easy. All right, give me a few minutes. And she's in. Not too bad. Did have to loosen up the transmission. Um, you saw how it was propped up on those pieces of wood. I basically just got the delves uh, lined up with the transmission and knocked the wood out and it just flopped right in place. So, super easy. One of the easiest engine to bell housing mates I've ever done. Not real hard on these because <coughs> the motor mounts kind of uh, automatically lock in place. So you're not fighting trying to get a bolt in or anything like that. Not hard at all. Lots of room. Okay, I guess that's it for today. I got a bunch of stuff plugged in, a lot of stuff tightened up, a lot of grounds. Still need to do the grounds on the back of the heads, which probably is not going to be easy on that side. Uh, now that I got the motor in, but we'll figure that out. But we'll be done by this with this whole thing by tomorrow, pretty sure. Like I said, that was the easiest engine to transmission uh, made up I've ever I've ever done.
still need to put the bolts and the motor mounts down there, but that's easy. Well, that's it, guys. No problem. These things are easy to swap motors on. Lots of room. Don't have to remove the radiator. Don't have to unbolt the transmission. Pretty easy. All right, guys, until tomorrow. All right, we got some day one bonus nighttime footage here. Uh, these just came in. Been waiting on these. I didn't think they would arrive before I got the, the engine in the truck. But anyway, what these are is they're bushings, and they're from aluminumspacers.com. And I don't know if this is going to work. This is just something I'm trying. But anyway, they're uh, 7 16th outside diameter and 319 thousandths inside diameter, which I believe equates to 8 millimeter. And the reason I ordered these is because the headers on these, just about any headers on anything really, uh, the, the holes, oh yeah, check out my, has anybody ever thought about doing this? This little, this little setup is worth the price of admission right here. Anyway, uh, when you put the headers on, and I'll get one here in a minute and do it, but anyway, the holes that are in the headers are 7 16 And of course these bolts here are eight millimeter. So you got your bolts in here like this, right? Well, when you put the header on, there's such there's so much play in it that, that the header just kind of rocks around and these ports don't line up right with the, the ports or the tubes on the headers. So I bought those bushings, I'm gonna try to bushing you know, you only need two on each head, on each side. You would put those in either, you know, here, here, or wherever, and that will keep the, the header from rocking. And it'll keep the, you know, it should keep the, uh, what do you call it, the collector uh, parallel to the, the engine, the crankshaft center line, or whatever you want to call it. But let me grab one of the headers, and I'll show you what I'm, what I'm talking about. But, man, look at this. Has anyone ever thought about doing this? Man, if you're going to put springs... On a head, man, it's like, you know, the perfect level. You can turn it around and everything. I don't know. Well, let me get, let me grab a let me grab a header. Okay, we got our ubiquitous speed engineering headers. Passenger side mocked up here. Um, speed engineering again, great headers for the price. You can't beat them as long as you V-band down here so they don't leak. Uh, here, here's the problem I was talking about. You can see that you have a lot of play in these things. If you look over here, how far off that thing can be. So, again, I'm going to take a bushing, and wherever it lines up perfect, I mean, it's Hopefully these speed engineering holes are drilled exactly where they are on the head and the bushings will just go right in. I don't know if this is going to work, but we're going to try it. So let me uh, slip a couple bushings on these two bolts to start with and hopefully they'll draw it up and make it center up on the head. Okay, so I got one of the bit bushings slid over the 8mm bolt. We're going to remove this one and see if it, if it lines up. Yeah, let me put the camera down and we'll get it tight. So what I had to end up doing is I had to get a 7 16th drill bit. The, apparently these holes aren't exactly uh, 7 16th. It's probably some metric or something. But you can see I just drilled it out and then I just took a hammer and just tacked them, tapped them in there real lightly. So I'm going to do that one. You can't do this one because it's square. And then I'm probably going to do the one, the last one over here. That should keep our header lined up if these holes match the head, which they may or may not. This may may not work. Okay, here's our setup. I'm gonna walk it over here to the head and see if it'll uh, they'll line up. Hopefully they will. 
Okay, they're installed and it worked like a charm. And I would highly recommend that. before, Even before you got your exhaust uh, from the header back installed, doing that will keep your, your header nice and perpendicular to the, like I said, the crankshaft plane or the engine itself. But you can see, you can see with just those two bushings installed, these other header bolts are absolutely dead freaking center in the middle of the, the header flange. Hats off to Speed Engineering for uh, these holes match up perfectly with the head. I mean, they're dead, dead center. In fact, I don't know if you can see the square one right here. It is absolutely dead center. So I would do that every time because if you put the headers in the car, they're going to droop like this. And then you're going to run in there and tighten them up and they're gonna, you're going to have a drooped header and your tubes are not going to be lined up straight with your ports. And worse than that, your exhaust isn't going to be, you know, from here back, it's not going to be straight. It's going to be pointing at the ground because the farther you go back this way, you know how that works. It may be a little up and down over here, but the farther you bring it out, it can be a couple of inches over here, an inch or two. But that's a, that uh, is definitely a good, good thing to do. And like I said, and she has these, these aren't custom made for me. I just looked, was looking for spacers and I found this on the internet. Here they are, right here. 80 cents a piece, I believe. Kind of pricey, but hey. Simple mod. All right, guys. Let me, uh, let me see if this uh, driver's side does the same thing. I'm sure it does. We'll see you all later.